Hello everyone, welcome to the first Global AMS R&D Online Showcase. It is a great privilege for me to welcome all of you today. It's good to see so many people interested and registered. We've got 153 people registered and there's 30 people on the line at the moment. So thank you all very much for joining here today. My name is Nicholas Lyons. I will be your MC today. Just as a bit of a brief background and introduction, I hold a Bachelor of Arts Science from the University of Buenos Aires in Argentina. I've got a PhD in Vet Science from the University in Sydney in Australia, and I did my thesis on robotic milking and grazing. I've got almost 15 years in experience in dairy technology, AMS and research and development. And currently I'm a development officer dairy with the New South Wales Department of Primary Industries and I'm project leader for Milking Edge. Milking Edge is an Australian AMS project supported by Dairy Australia, New South Wales and DPI. Our aim is to support industry to consider, invest and operate robotic milking successfully. And we do so by generating tools and resources, regional engagement and training. It is a small team made basically by myself as project leader, Jessica Maloney as project officer, and Juan Garjulo as a postgrad student based at the University of Sydney. So we rely a lot in collaborations and engagement with industry, not only in Australia, but also overseas. So why a global AMS R&D online showcase and why did we come up with this idea? Basically, automatic milking systems started in the 70s with the first concepts. The initial R&D and the first prototypes happened in the 80s with research and development mainly in Europe. In 1992, the first commercial farm was installed in the Netherlands and the initial adoption was mainly smaller farms, often family owned and family operated, systems with high producing cows, mainly kept indoors, and in regions receiving high milk price. But that is very different to what happens nowadays. If we look at what happens nowadays, there's currently around 3 million dairy cows milked with robots in around 25,000 farms that are operating 50,000 robots all around the world. That is basically 8 million milkings um, happening every day with robotic milking in the world. And basically every continent around the globe, every dairy system from pasture based and from every scale are operating that technology. So we have systems with very low inputs, um, for example, in New Zealand, operating with 300, 400 grams of concentrate per cow to systems in the US or Europe that are completely indoors. And the same with scale. The smallest farm has one robot milking around 50 to 60 cows, and the largest farm in an indoor system has currently 67 robots um, in Chile, that's Ankali, and it's milking with 67 De Laval robots. And the largest pasture-based system is located in Tasmania, that's Tasmac Farm, that's the photo on the right-hand side on the left, on the bottom. Um, that is milking with 16 GEA boxes. So again, it's not constrained to smaller scale and it's not constrained um, to one type of farming system. So again, there's farms operating all around the world and we thought it was time to bring all this research and development from all around the world to one um, uh, single place. Um, and given the distance and the spread, we had to find a clever way of doing it. So we came up with the idea of bringing up a global AMS research and development online showcase. And this is basically a whole day where we will have a lot of speakers. This is only possible thanks to all the speakers that came on board. We have currently 22 speakers that have confirmed their, their participation from 13 countries um, around the world. So thank you to all of them for the time and, and collaboration to share their knowledge. It wouldn't be possible without all their help. But thanks to all of you too. As I said, we have 153 people registered so far from 24 countries. This is, and when we look at the spread, it's 16% of dairy farmers of dairy staff, 
52% of consultants or, um, or service provider and 20% of researchers and students. So it's a big spread of what people are out there. So what were the options? Basically, I don't know if you saw that I put out there, but basically if we had to travel to all those countries of all those 13 countries that the speakers are from, we would have to travel roughly around 86,000 kilometers, which is around two times around the world, or one quarter of the way to the moon. This would involve um, taking 25 flights and spending almost seven days nonstop flying. So somebody said, look, this is a low carbon footprint conference. It is a brilliant organization and we are cutting everybody's carbon, carbon footprint, which is good to hear. But some people also said, I was looking forward to some days away from home or I'm missing out on a lot of frequent flyer points. So it depends how you look at it. Um, it might change, but it's definitely an effective and a clever way of doing it. So we have a jam-packed schedule today. Uh, you should have all received um, the schedule of all the presentations. Each speaker will have 30 minutes. We will have uh, two speakers in some of the sessions, but they will still speak um, for 30 minutes all up. 